Dear students, in this module, we're going to look at the visualization of the structures again. In the previous module, we looked at how the alpha carbons could play a very important role in determining and visualizing the coordinates of, a, of different atoms within the protein. Besides knowing how many alpha carbons are there within the protein, you also want to know where these alpha carbons are located. Towards that, we need to be able to measure the distance between various alpha carbons. And for that, we need different experimental apparatuses which are used to measure such small distances between different atoms in a protein. To begin with, I will introduce to you the unit of measurement for the bonds in the proteins. This gentleman here, his name is Ansidel Anders Angstrom. He was a Swede and in his, in the appreciation of his scientific endeavors, his name Angstrom, that was his surname, is being used these days to measure distances between different atoms in the proteins. Angstrom is used to not only measure the distances between atoms, but also molecules, small biological structures, and the length of chemical bonds. Simply, one angstrom is about a 0.1 nanometer or one tenth of a nanometer. So it's a very small unit of measurement. And of course, because the proteins are so small, then we need a small unit as well. To give you an idea of the scale, the atoms of phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine are approximately one angstrom in covalent radius, while a hydrogen atom is one quarter of an angstrom or 0.25 angstrom. In this figure, I show you the range of visualizing different proteins if the angstrom unit and the resolution uh, that is expressed in this unit is used and varied. If you look at the bottom, so this is a one angstrom resolution protein structure model and you can individually identify the different atoms in the protein backbone. If you look at the example above, then this is taken at two angstrom resolution. You can clearly see how the different atoms are not clear anymore and the electron cloud surrounding these atoms is larger in size. And if you move to the higher example, the three angstrom resolution, then clearly several atoms, they are combined within the plot. So it means that this is a higher resolution model. So one angstrom resolution and this is a low resolution model. In simple words, one angstrom resolution helps you to visualize those atoms that are within the measurement range. While at three angstrom, only the bigger atoms are visible and sometimes they are also overlapped. So in conclusion, you visualize a protein structure by following the alpha carbon chain within the backbone of the protein. And you measure the distances between these alpha carbons using the angstrom. And a higher resolution would mean a smaller angstrom number. And therefore, you need to have structures that are at, let's say, 1 angstrom or 0.5 angstrom. There are several experimental protocols that are used to measure these distances in angstroms. And we're going to look at them later.